We're currently living in the most technologically advanced time in history. The global pandemic accelerated critical infrastructure's digital transformation and reinforced the importance of secure connections to help move society safely and efficiently. As the United States government considers infrastructure investments, we recognize that every new connection brings another opportunity for cyber criminals. In infrastructure, those connections might be a traffic light, a bus transit signal receiving priority, or a vehicle inspection center holding data on cars and consumers. We have the advantage at Parsons of working across the table from cyber and intelligence experts who work to solve complex security issues and respond to existing and emerging threats every day. Cybersecurity is critical, but it remains just one piece of the infrastructure puzzle. I'm glad to be joined by our critical infrastructure business shooter leaders, Tom Topolsky, who leads our Connected Communities Group, and Mark Fiakowski, who leads our Mobility Solutions Group, to talk more about the backlog of infrastructure in the United States. So let's start with the basics. What is infrastructure? Mark? Sure. Thanks, Carrie. In general, infrastructure is anything that is foundational to maintaining and improving the economic vitality of our communities. So infrastructure includes things like, you know, the movement of people and goods across states and through st cities, the storage, transmission, treatment, and distribution of water, the collection, treatment, and discharge or reuse of wastewater, the generation, transmission, and distribution of power, telecommunications, education, healthcare, and more. Tom, uh, anything to add there? Yeah, thanks, Mark. I think you covered it very well. But looking forward, um, I think the administration's Build Back Better vision is entirely appropriate for the day. The White House has framed investments in infrastructure as a matter of ensuring the nation's global competitiveness, highlighting in its 2.3 trillion American jobs plan how the nation's economy is the world's largest, yet our infrastructure ranks only at number 13, according to the World Economic Forum. The U.S. was ranked tops on two scores, road and airport connectivity, which measure how people, how readily people can get between different parts of the country. But we fall behind on the railroad, railroad score at about number 48 globally. And for water and electricity utility infrastructure, we rank number 23. So as the world becomes more connected and digitized, we must ensure that our infrastructure is ready in terms of being demand responsive to more rapidly changing travel demand patterns resilient in the face of environmental challenges such as hurricanes, rising sea levels, wildfires, and sustainable using technology to extend the life cycle and improve the performance of physical assets. Back to you, Carrie. Thanks. According to the American Society of Civil Engineers, America's infrastructure is graded as C minus. I don't know about you when you were in school, but that never impressed me to get a C. <laughs> A small improvement from our previous score of a D, which was even worse, but still it represents plenty of room for improvement. Where do you see the biggest opportunity for infrastructure improvement? Mark, let's start with you again. Sure, and there's certainly a lot of room for improvement. Uh, to pick one area, according to the ASCE report card that you just mentioned, more than 40% of public roads in the U.S. are in poor or mediocre condition. And the impacts of that are real. In the U.S. alone, motors spend almost $130 billion each year and extra vehicle repairs and other operating costs due to the poor conditions of our roads. By improving our roads, our motorists will save maintenance and fuel costs while improving public safety. Plus these improvements give you know, opportunities to states and cities to plan for roadways that can accommodate the coming wave of connected and autonomous vehicles. And as we rebuild, we should be designing for the long term and not looking short term. You know, not too long ago, the standard for design was a 30 year service life. Now we look at the longer term and have even designed critical facilities for a 100 year service life. While that's a little more expensive in the short term, uh, longer service life saves maintenance and reconstruction costs over the long term. And one of the ways that we do this is by incorporating technology and climate resiliency innovations. As you both know, we've designed more than 4,500 bridges and over 10,000 miles of road all around the world. So we're excited to be part of the solution to improving the world's infrastructure. Tom, what are your thoughts? Yeah, well, thanks, Mark. Um, again, I'm going to focus on technology. Um, as we tackle traditional infrastructure repairs and rebuilds, there is a tremendous opportunity again to build back better. I'll speak to three specific examples. First is building with smart solutions. So using technology such as uh, digital twinning, you know, which is, as we know, a digital replica of a physical asset, makes asset management and operations more efficient and effective. Number two, applying existing technology to new platforms. Our technology is increasingly being deployed for safety enhancements as well. For example, the Rhode Island Turnpike and Bridge Authority recently selected Parsons INET for a bridge safety program. 
The INET bridge safety system is being implemented on the Newport Pell and Mart Hope bridges, uh, and it's designed to provide assistance to people in distress. So we're very proud of that. And then thirdly, developing new solutions to better understand and utilize the data that's constantly being generated around us. Intelligent intersections is a good example of that. As we know, the pandemic has probably forever changed how we commute and having dynamic demand responsive intersections improves safety, environmental sustainability, and just improves the quality of life in general. Then there are our cars. Modern vehicles generate about 25 gigabytes of data every hour. So your car is mostly a computer on wheels, collecting and wirelessly transmitting vast quantities of data to the car manufacturing, not just only on vehicle performance and safety, but also personal information too, such as your weight, the restaurants you visit, your musical tastes and the places you go. Eventually, autonomous cars will generate even more data, as much as 3,600 giga gigabytes of data per hour. The data is much more valuable than the vehicle itself, clearly. Back to you, Carrie. Thank you, boy. It's certainly exciting how advanced technology is going to lead us to smart infrastructure for the future. Uh, speaking of rail, rail was the highest scoring infrastructure category this year with a B. What is the rail industry doing right now and how can we improve rail and particularly considering the massive drop in passenger rail traffic due to the COVID pandemic? Tom? Well, Carrie, first I'd like to emphasize that public transit is a safe and equitable transportation mode. When robust transit options exist, fewer cars are driven, reducing their harmful effect on society, which includes the loss of at least 30,000 people every year and maiming of many more in road accidents. Staying on safety, the rail industry is a good example of looking towards technology to improve system safety and efficiency. The National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, made its first recommendation calling for automatic train control over 50 years ago, back in 1970. 20 years later, in 1990, the need for a safety redundancy system on railroads still existed. Positive train separation, which was later named positive train control in 2001, was first placed on the NTSB most wanted list that year. We are pleased at Parsons to have delivered several of the PT systems across the country. Further safety improvements need to be implemented as well as the economic benefits that have been anticipated. You cannot have a leading economy without a highly developed, safe and well-maintained infrastructure network. And rail is essential to the movement of goods and people. As railroads across the country move to PTC 2.0, we're working to help our passenger and freight railroad uh, clients um, <clears throat> unlock the data generated by these PTC systems and help improve troubleshooting, reporting, and diagnostics through our RailPulse solution. RailPulse PTC dashboards enable network managers to monitor the status of PTC enabled trains in near real time, break out and drill down capabilities, provide insights, enforcement type, failure type, percentage of failed PTC runs, and other key metrics. Broadly, transit needs to be demand responsive, safe, and reliable. The economic benefits of transit investment are clear. Recent studies report that every $10 million of transit investment made result in business sales increasing by $30 million. Residential property is typically much more valuable if located near high frequency transit service, which means cities reap greater tax revenues. Furthermore, transit agencies and organizations employ large numbers of people and create many times more private sector jobs. We've seen that road congestion has returned in most urban centers as people return to work and other activities. So transit is, I think the way we get people back, transit is a proven mode to reduce road con congestion. So it's incumbent upon transit agencies to ensure the safe, clean and reliable transit systems are available. We've seen that millennials prefer walkable communities over small, living to, seeking to live around robust transit shops, restaurants, libraries, parks, and a mix of housing styles. I think it's also important to note the broad support for transit. In the past five years, almost 80% of transit funding ballot initiatives were approved by voters across the country. I think it's also widely understood that commuters are more productive on public transit than cars. When driving an automobile, even with semi-autonomous vehicles, one cannot sleep, read, write, relax, or do anything that transit takers are able to do. Mark, uh, what are your thoughts? Thanks, Tom. Uh, to build on that, you know, transit's really a critical back backbone of many of our communities. Uh, a couple examples for you. The data from the United uh, for Infrastructure shows that 2.8 million essential workers use public transit to get to work, and two-thirds of that group are people of color. So there's a huge opportunity to improve public transit in the U.S., as you mentioned, making transit more available, more reliable, 
Now that helps connect people to better jobs and that can help improve wages and economic activity. And Parsons experience extends across the entire transit spect spectrum. Uh, we've designed the most cutting edge rail systems in the world, in the Middle East, Canada, Europe, and the US. And we also apply new technology approaches to tra traditional bus transit systems to make them more efficient and reliable for the commuters that re rely on them every day. Tom, I know that uh, you've been looking at some of the different bus and technology options that we've been implementing. Uh, yes, Mark, thank you. Buses are near and dear to my heart. I think buses are an essential part of the transit infrastructure, and I think many of the agencies are looking to add or improve bus services. Bus transit requires less time and capital at startup compared to other alternatives like light rail or subway, and can benefit massively from technologies like signal priority, connected and autonomous vehicle technology, and traffic monitoring and analytics. Kerry? Thank you both. Uh, terrific answers. And it's going to be great to see what Build Back Better does in terms of our transit systems. Yeah. Aviation is another very important transportation category that's been impacted by COVID. Uh, research recently from the United States Department of Transportation showed a sharp decline in demand at the onset of the COVID pandemic. And estimates are that we might not see a full recovery for several years. How are airports adapting and what does this mean for the future of aviation infrastructure? Tom, start with you. Well, thanks, Kerry. Well, the aviation industry has not seen drastic changes in travel patterns such as those brought on by COVID since 9-11, about 20 years ago. As we worked with the TSA post 9-11 to reimagine airport security, we're currently working with the TSA, FAA, and our clients around the country to reimagine the passenger experience in a post-COVID world. As air travel continues to rebound, it will not simply revert to pre-COVID patterns. Improvements, some of which have been on the radar for decades, have come to the forefront and airlines, airports, aviation authorities are now looking to implement solutions to help reestablish passenger conf confidence, such as contactless check-in, passenger screening, screening and, and baggage handling technology. So exciting days ahead. Gary, back to you. Thanks. Um, Mark, the president's recent American Jobs Plan, also called the Infrastructure Bill, includes spending across nearly every infrastructure category. What are you most excited about in this plan for Parsons? I think it's the fact that we do business in nearly every infrastructure category named in the American Jobs Plan, you know, roads, bridges, highways, ports, airports, rail, bus transit, you know, the list, the list goes on. And we understand how connections created by infrastructure, whether it's a transit line between neighborhoods or broadband internet connections in rural communities, they really foster opportunities, which in turn you know, improve mobility, economic growth and safety. Tom, what are your thoughts? Well, I think that, uh, thanks Mark. I think the American Jobs Plan provides a framework for much needed investment in infrastructure that our country relies on every day. Inclusion of technology enabled solutions are essential to providing the country with a future ready infrastructure. So Mark, uh, what are your closing thoughts? Oh, thanks, Tom. I wanted to circle back to an item you had mentioned earlier, and that was uh, sustainability. You know, global sustainability requires our infrastructure to work harder for us. And that technology, you know, whether it's EV charging stations to solutions to improve res resiliency, you know, are going to be required. A couple examples, you know, our electrical infrastructure needs upgrades, particularly with the push for electrification. And the resiliency of our transmission and distribution systems need to be improved so that we can reliably deliver power uh, to our growing communities and, and, and really address those growing power needs. And the American Job Plan also includes investment in cleaning up oil and gas wells and former mines. Now, these are core areas of expertise for Parsons. And it's important that, that this work is going to help support those mine communities and also provide new job opportunities and healthier and safer, safer communities. Uh, so a lot of great opportunities uh, you know, with this whole plan and excited to see it roll out. Great, thank you, Tom and Mark. Uh, most importantly, for your leadership of the critical infrastructure segment of Parsons, and today for a great discussion on the exciting future of infrastructure. The American Jobs Plan provides an excellent framework for the next decade, and we look forward to working with our clients, private and public, at every level of the government to flesh out the details of what these investments mean for each community. And as these and other infrastructure improvements move forward, we want to not only catch up on the backlog of projects, but also get ahead by advancing the digitization of infrastructure. Our experts have been implementing some of the most advanced infrastructure technologies in the world, such as fully automated trains in Riyadh, Dubai, and Vancouver. We can and we will bring that technology and expertise home to apply to our critical infrastructure projects across the United States. Thank you very much. All right. Thank, Thank you. you.